selected and um, once it's fully processed, we will be placing it on gardenstyleessay.com. Let me share our presentation here. All right, so do you guys see the screen here? We good? All right, so good morning, everyone. Welcome to our outdoor transfer transformation, create your dream landscape webinar. My name is Seth Patterson. I'm a SAWS conservation consultant and will be your host today. Our presenters are Juan Solas, who is a SAWS conservation planner for, and Gail Duggleby, who is another of our SAWS conservation consultants. Should you have any questions as we go along, please enter them in the Q&A box at the bottom of the screen and we'll answer them after the presentation. Uh, this again is presentations being recorded. So, you know, if any information goes along, you can always review it later once it's posted on gardenstyleessay.com. I know a lot of you are rewards members. Um, so if you're interested in the point for uh, attending this, stick around to the end of the presentation and we'll be providing you uh, with the quiz link the Survey Monkey quiz link that you'll need to complete, as well as the secret word of the presentation, which we will reveal a little bit later on. Um, the link for the survey will be placed in the chat, but you'll also be able to find it on the Garden Style calendar, as well as email to uh, rewards members. And with that, I'm gonna hand this off to Juan and let's get started. All right, good morning, everyone. I am thrilled to be here with you today. And I am sure that many of you are familiar with our website, gardenstyleessay.com, but I just wanna give a little overview for those that may not be as familiar. Uh, you should know that this is a great site for all things gardening in San Antonio. In it, you will find a plant uh, a base that you can delve into and search for well over, search through well over 400 plants. I think we're now approaching close to 500. Uh, but there's all kinds of good practical information there on each plant. You will also find a section on garden resources that gives you a little bit more information, a lot of detailed information on planning, on planning your, your projects, um, and also uh, a problem solving section as well. So I, I encourage you to dig into that. There's also a great how to video section, uh, how to program your irrigation controller for those of you with irrigation systems. There's a lot of information about that including how to prune uh, your shrubs. So again, take a look at that. If there's something that may not be there that you still have questions about, know that you can actually ask our garden geek questions about that. And uh, yeah, let us know. Uh, now the one part that uh, allows us to keep growing the content in the website is the, our, garden, our garden articles. That those come from our weekly e-newsletter that go out every Tuesday but they end up here, so it, it too can be a resource for you. So as you can see on the drop menu there, we have a lot of programs, rebates and coupons um, that are available to our customers. Uh, most of these are residential, but there's a few that are for commercial customers. But we're gonna delve into four programs today. Let's go to the next screen. Of those four, Okay, of those four, you will find information on the website. One of them, as you can see, because we don't have a tile for it, the outdoor living rebate is on its way. It is currently under development. But these are these will be the cornerstone of your transformations as you delve into any kind of project that you may have in for your yard. Uh, the landscape coupon, the residential design rebate for those of you with irrigation systems, and our rewards uh, program. Okay, let's go to the next one. So since 2013, our, oh, sorry, I got ahead of myself. Okay, so guiding principle. Um, you know, I've been with SAWS for a long time and I've always, when I go out and I talk to people, I know that it's, landscaping's not hard, I've been there. And actually I'm still there. But, you know, I always, you know, try to go back to what is it that, how should I shape any kind of project I may want? And always having the, the rule of one third is helpful because at least to create a water saving landscape. Um, if you can keep your yards to a third lawn, a third garden bed, and if possible, a third in patio or wood deck, you're well on your way to having a water saving uh, landscape. Now, uh, this is ideal. 
So if you can get to just under 50% of, of grass, you're doing very, very well. But we always want you to minimize your grass to simply to what is functional. Uh, for example, here in the picture on the left, uh, you can see that it's, you see a tiny bench off on the side. Perhaps you actually would prefer to have something that looks like something on the right. So uh, our programs are geared to help you move in that direction and hopefully save water along the way. All right, let's go to the next one. All right, so this is the landscape coupon. Now, this is the program that's been available to our customers since 2013. And with it, you are able to remove grass, which you have to, it's a requirement, but it qualified customers are issued a $100 coupon uh, to purchase 15 plants. You remove the uh, grass in a 200 spot, a 200 area of your, of your yard and transform it into a landscape bed. Um, that is per coupon. So uh, you are, are able to request up to four coupons. Um, you can create one big giant 800 square foot landscape bed or create four different beds them throughout your yard as well. Gail's gonna talk a, talk a little bit more about that in a bit. Uh, but I want you to know that the application is currently available um, on our website uh, and we're already processing applications and issuing coupons this week. Uh, the application will be available through October 15th, and you are able to request up to four coupons per year. Um, in the lifetime of the program, you can request up to eight. So effectively, that would be 1,600 square feet of effective landscape change that will help you save water in the long run. So just know that once you have your coupons, you'll be able to redeem them uh, between now and October 31st at our participating vendors, that includes, and Know that this information is on our website, but some of our vendors include Melburgers, uh, Rainbow Gardens on, on Thousand Oaks, and on Bandera, the Garden Center, and Fanix over in the southeast side. Uh, once you are done, we want you to submit those inspection forms and photos. We want to know that you completed your project, and uh, quite frankly, we want to see what you've done. So with, uh, with that, let's go to our next slide. Here you'll see some of the of the plants that we have available. Uh, there are 40 species that you can pick from, and with the varieties, it mushrooms to well over 100 that you can select. But Gail here is going to give us more information about that and a few other things. Thank you, Juan. Yes. So as you see from these beautiful pictures, we have 40 different pictures, but in reality, we have hundreds of varieties. Because, for example, it lists salvia. Well. If you know anything about salvia and uh, sage, there's a lot of varieties. So when it says salvia, there's a whole bunch to pick from. When it says skullcap, there's pink, there's blue, there's purple. And you know when it comes to a number of these, they're just gonna have different varieties. Even the Turks cap can have different varieties. And what I want you to do is look at those little icons that are down in that little red circle, because this is gonna help you determine which plants are gonna do best in your your yard. You know, we've got things for shade, we've got things for sun, we've got things that are deer resistant and things that are evergreen. Maybe you want to create a vegetative wall, you know, behind and your back fence behind your neighbor or whatever. Well, you know, mountain laurel is a great pick for that one. And so we do have trees as well as the small species. And it kind of starts that way. When you look on the far left picture, it's got the smallest ones. And as you move to the right, those are all getting bigger and bigger until you get to trees, such as redbud, crepe myrtle, mountain laurel, et cetera. But look at those little icons. They're gonna tell you a whole lot about those plants, what's gonna be the best conditions for the plant, and also what size it's gonna be. That's really important because as you design your landscape, you really wanna kind of map it out. You wanna see that you've got big stuff in the back and kind of moving towards you know, smaller things and contrasting colors. You've got a lot to pick from. And when Juan says that you can do four of these in a year, that's $400 coupon. What could you do with $400 worth of plants? Talk about transforming your yard. You could definitely do it. And then of course, if you've got a big enough yard, you can do it again for another $400 coupon, 1600 square feet of beautiful. Go ahead. And I just wanna add, Gail, that the plants that you select must be of one gallon for the small plants and the 
the, the trees, the small trees must be bought in five gallons pots. So, so that you can, so those poor folks can properly budget. Right, so they're not gonna be those little four inch, nothing wrong with the little four inch, but we're giving you some big one gallon plants. So this is gonna be great. You're gonna start off with a, a more established, ready to go plant. And those trees are gonna be like already making an impact already with five gallon. So <clears throat> as we were talking about before, a lot of times when people move into the yard or maybe just, you know, this is what it's been for a while, but you're ready to make something better. So grass is the most water hogging of plants. So if you want to reduce your water bill, your water usage, but also make a dynamic and interesting backyard, front yard, side yard, this is going to be the coupon that you want to use. So in these two examples, a lot of times when I go to do irrigation consults, especially new homes, new subdivisions, this is what it looks like. And it is a big blank canvas ready to decorate. So take a look at these. And this is where I was talking about when you put things in the back, like towards the fence, you want them to kind of be taller. And as you move around the corners and the curves, then you're, you're gonna be putting some different things, different colors, different sizes, different shapes. But Let's talk about what it's gonna look like. Let's go to the next one. So this person has an existing bed, but they wanna expand it. They wanna take out more of that grass. Well, how do they know? It's curves. How do they know what 200 square feet is? I mean, that just sounds complicated. I don't like doing a lot of math. That's why I rely on Seth to create fabulous programs. And in this case, Juan taught me, you just take a 60 foot rope, and you make it into a shape, and whatever's inside that shape is 200 square feet. To get a visual on what it looks like as a rectangle, it's probably about the size of a parking space, but not everybody has little squares and rectangles, and honestly, I like the curves better. So take your rope, 60 foot, make it where you want it to be in whatever shape you have, including adding to an existing bed. It's gonna look great and it gives you a real feel. So when you apply for the coupon, you're gonna send in a photo of what you're gonna be taking out. And this is excellent. This is actually from someone's. They showed what they were gonna do and where they were gonna do it. So you can even start imagining just when looking at this lovely rope, how beautiful it's gonna be next and afterwards. Go ahead. And here is a much bigger project, but still just phenomenal. And the view from this, I don't know where they took it, but it's perfect. So on the left, they have what they're planning to do. And as you see, they've already started mapping it out. And they are gonna be taking, you know, not only just the, that back bed, but the one on the side, and then a little bit on the other side as well. So they take it, they've sent the picture in, they remove the grass, they go take that coupon, and this one in particular had two coupons, so it's, oh, so it's four coupons, sorry, 800 square feet. So as you see, they've planted their plants, they've put their mulch in, and what you have to always remember is that they may start out this size on the right, but they're going to expand, bloom, grow, and it's going to be a really lush, beautiful garden bed, similar to what is behind Seth. Go ahead, thanks. All right, so here's another example where sometimes you've got some curves and you've got different situations. On the picture on the left, what they've done, this is kind of after they've done it, they've removed all the grass on the back fence and on the left side, and it doesn't have to be all, you know, one size equal. It could be wide in one area, thinner in another area, it can have trees, it can have, you know, beautiful water, um, tolerant, sorry, drought tolerant plants. And, and you don't have to have any irrigation in there. In fact, that's one of the requirements. If there was irrigation in that area, that part, those heads of irrigation need to be removed. Well, you don't need them to be there anyway, because the plants that are on the water saver landscape coupon are super drought tolerant and native and 
just going to do great without any additional watering. Now, on the right, we've got some front yard curb appeal going on. Well, before when they had grass, I can imagine that it was pretty hard to keep it from running off with irrigation heads, running down the street. It's just, you know, a difficult slope. So what do you do with slope? Well, first of all, you go to our gardenstyleessay.com and look up articles on slope because we've got a lot of them. But in this particular case, they put kind of a rock tier thing and then they took out the grass and they, they put some beautiful plants in. They're going to be holding that soil in, not needing extra water and just kind of making it a more dynamic looking front yard. It's gorgeous. Go ahead. And here's two more examples that I really like. So here they have the side yard. And they still kept those hedges over next to the house, but they took out all that grass right there and they're putting in a much more taller. And so right now it's the beginning. So these are little plants, but they're gonna get bigger and they're, they're just gonna be a beautiful front yard appeal, curb appeal. And on the picture on the right is one of my favorite examples. So many times when I go to the irrigation consults, I look at these side yards that have, you know, another house on the other side, shadows on both sides being cast on the grass. It's too shady for grass. And you're sitting there watering and it just becomes this little swamp. And I know a lot of you know exactly what I'm talking about. Well, trying to get grass to grow in that kind of a shade is just like asking a fish to live out of water. So what do you do instead? You take out that grass, you take out those irrigation heads, and then you put in these shade tolerant plants that are gonna just make it way more interesting. It's gonna reduce your water bill and you won't have that struggle of trying to keep grass alive in the shade. So that's a side yard that I think is just a beautiful example. Go ahead. All right, so this is an irrigation consult that I went to and I walked into her backyard and I just was like, wow, this is awesome. And I know that from this picture, because it's a panorama, it actually makes the grass look bigger than it really is. So the grass is really probably 50% of the yard and she has taken every side yard, backyard and other side yard and then right off the porch as you see on the far right and she has used those water saver landscape coupons to create you know just a beautiful enjoyable oasis in her backyard she's got hummingbirds and butterflies and all kinds of you know wildlife coming in and, and enjoying it as well um, but this is a, just a great example where she used those water saver landscape coupons and made it a complete transformation. And she probably did it over a couple of years. It all depends on what you can do. Don't feel overwhelmed and think, oh, I've got to do it all. Maybe she did one side of a yard at a time. Okay, we'll go to the next one. And this one is one of the examples that I love the most because it uses one of my favorite plants, silver ponyfoot. Now, silver ponyfoot is a low growing. It's one of the first pictures when you look at our landscape coupon card. And it's got, as the name implies, a silvery green to it. It likes a lot of sun, but you can also use it with, you know, our our other coupons to kind of incorporate maybe some flagstone and between there, you know, you grow in your silver pony foot. And it could just be a, a great replacement for grass. You really shouldn't water it at all because one of the things it loves is sun and the next thing it loves is dry conditions. And so as you look at the picture on the right, that just shows you it's mixed in with succulents, agave, cactus, a bunch of grass. It just looks so much more interesting than a yard of plain green grass and no watering necessary. Go ahead. Which leads and, us to our secret ahead. word. Go ahead. No, I was just going to say yes. So as Gail's talking about silver pony foot, this is just the first time we will mention this is our our quiz secret word. So later on when we give you the link to the quiz, just remember that the word of the webinar is silver pony foot. And I love that up close picture. It gives you a, a real good feel for what it looks like. And here's another example. I told you that it likes a lot of sun, but this particular house has used it both in the backyard that has trees, so it's mixed sun, 
and on the side yard. So it's it's definitely got not exactly full sun, but obviously it's thriving. So this just gives you another example where they've taken on all their grass and put in a lot of real cool, interesting plants using our landscape coupons. Another one for those who have a little bit of shade um, is the inland sea oats. It's a beautiful ornamental grass and it stands anywhere between like a foot to a foot and a half tall. And it does like mixed sun and shade. And because it's taller, you might wanna tuck it in the corner or up against the wall of the house or fence. It's a little bit taller, so it's not what you call a ground cover, although you do find it in parks as a ground cover because nobody's walking all through there. But where you're gonna walk, you're gonna wanna tuck it like even around a tree would be a great, great plant. As you see, it's got this beautiful green nodding head. That head, although it's wide, as you see in the close-up, is about as thin as paper when you turn it on the side. And then in the fall, again, as you see on the picture on the right, it turns this beautiful fall brown. It's a great one for those who have mixed sun or shade in their yards. Go ahead. And here's just a couple more examples that you can use instead of grass, herbs. So on the left is rosemary, just doing a bang up job. And as anybody knows who has seen rosemary in our area, it just grows like crazy without any um, watering at all. The other one on the right is oregano. So these are things that you can incorporate into your landscape as beautiful and you can let them bloom if you want to or you can you know pick off the flowers to keep them going but you can use it you can cook with it and you don't have to water it and they're on our our landscape coupon plants go ahead now i want you to think back to those pictures of the big plain green yard and imagine putting either one of these in it tucked in the side or in the back. They're just, it's just so much more beautiful to have these kind of plants going. On the left is a Texas redbud and it's doing what it does in the spring, just exploding with beautiful pink flowers. The leaves will come next. And then on the right is Mexican bush sage. And I like to mix up Mexican bush sage kind of like it, like it is in this picture. It's in the back and then in front of it, put a contrasting color of a lower growing plant. This one is lantana that is not on our landscape coupon, but we have plenty of other yellow flowering plants to pick from. But it's just great, you know, it's, it's just pizzazz. And wouldn't you rather have pizzazz than a big green yard that water hogs? Yeah, I know. Go ahead. And here for the pink lovers, on the left is pink skullcap. Um, it can tolerate mixed sun and even shade. It will bloom less. So if you have a sunny spot, incorporate some pink skullcap into your yard. It's on our coupon uh, page and you can also get purple skullcap. I find that it's less frequent in the nurseries. Maybe that's because every time it's there, people buy it up. But I do see a lot of pink skullcap scattered around the city and doing wonderful and blooming like crazy. On the right is Primrose. This is actually a friend of mine's house and she has completely transformed her landscape to be nothing but native plants. So this one, Primrose, Pink Evening Primrose, is not on our landscape coupon um, program, but you could use your Water Saver Rewards points to buy it. It's another one that is less frequently found in the nurseries, but the more you ask for it, the more you'll find it. That's what we found with a lot of native plants. We get a lot of people asking for it, the nurseries will start carrying it. So this is just another one that you could incorporate into your landscape. Great, you know, long blooming, but you use one of those water saver rewards points to buy it. All right, go ahead. <coughs> and back to Juan. I think you're muted, Juan. Yeah. There you go. Well, you missed nothing, really. Anyway, <laughs> if uh, if you are excited about possibly applying for the landscape coupon, you should know that um, I, I see a lot of the invoices. So do expect some out-of-pocket costs to you. Um, but I can tell you that on, on average, uh, the average invoice is about $132. So minus the $100 from the coupon, it's $32 out-of-pocket. Now, that's on average. I have seen 
a few invoices that are under and just or just over a hundred dollars but we don't dictate the price that the vendors have the plans at so uh really it depends on the time of year and sometimes you just get lucky and walk into a sale so with that in mind so the, the for the longest time the the landscape coupon had a partner coupon and that was the patio skip coupon and as you can see here from the picture a customer successfully transformed the little bit of a backyard the little bit of a porch that they had into extended patio with a flagstone feature they did a great job of, of designing it and as you can see here uh, they are totally expanding their uh, indoor living space to the outdoor uh, to me this is fantastic and a lot of, of thought went into it and were was very very successful let's go to the next slide Okay, so here are a few more examples of what our customers have done over the years. Um, this beautiful flagstone feature on the left, uh, as you can see, it is a permeable feature. That is one of the key requirements for this program and uh, is that you create something that is permeable. Um, the price point for a lot of these uh, can vary quite a bit. Um, on the right, you see that this customer chose to go with a 12 by 12 uh, paver. That is probably the least expensive when it comes to this kind of project. Um, so always be mindful of your budgets as you move forward. So you may be asking yourself, well, why did you get rid of this program? Actually, we're not getting rid of it. We are evolving it. Because one of the things that uh, over the years that we've always got phone calls on was, next slide. Well, yes. Decking. So, we, the, over the years, I received so many calls. It's like, why don't you do decking? And it makes sense. You know, in San Antonio, with our hill country elevations, uh, back door can be quite a drop. So uh, in order to uh, transition out of the house into your backyard, a decking makes sense. And guess what? It's another way of how you can reduce the amount of grass that you have in your yard. So we wanted to incorporate this. Now, the only way that we could do it is to use the rebate type of program. Now, if you were to look at our program section on our website, you'll see that we have a combination of coupons and rebates. And basically at its very essence, a coupon is something that you, like if you go to HEB, you use your coupons. Well, you use that coupon to go make your purchase on the featured item. That pretty much gives you a discount on the purchase, just like I explained on the landscape coupon. With the rebate, you will be qualified for the program, but you will have to purchase all the items yourself. And once you complete the project and pass inspection, that's when you are given a rebate for the effective changes that you have made. So basically, that's a very, very simple difference between the two but this is the only way that we could incorporate that particular this particular type of, of project and and you know incentivize our customers to to make these kinds of changes so next slide please so in April we will be um, releasing our outdoor living rebate so the patio escape is not going away it's simply going to be folded into this new rebate so you will still be able to create, as you can see on the left, those patio scape features that uh, many of our customers have done and that many of you want to do. It's just a different way of how you're going to go about it. Okay. So at the minimum that you uh, that you will have to uh, start with is 200 square feet. It matches the same amount of of grass removal that you would have to commit to with a patio scape coupon. So it's going to start at that point as well. Now. The maximum amount that we will rebate on is about 500 square feet. Now, with the landscape coupon, you are able to do up to 1,600 square feet. So if you start thinking about how these things add up and how you can make even more changes, start thinking in terms of what you can do to combine. Okay, so perhaps you do create a 500 square feet uh, foot uh, feature and you add plants. For example, if you look in the picture in the middle here on the left, you can see that on the edges, you can possibly add a landscape bed. That's probably a good area where you can buy those plants with your landscape coupon and incorporate that into that design if you wanted to. 
Um, but again, this is how yet another way how you can combine programs. So the new rebate, we want it to be DIY friendly because I know that many of you are very crafty. I am not. I would probably hire someone to do it. But you know, we want to give you the option where you could do both, either do it yourself or talk to a designer or a contractor, if the case may be. Um, I want you to know that uh, once this is launched, a approval of the site plans will be required before you get started. Okay, and once you get given the approval, you will have one year to complete. Uh, we want you to do it uh, in a way that it's going to last for a long, long time because a well done feature like this will add value to your house in the long run. Next slide. I cannot emphasize enough that this is only for new construction, constructed spaces. It must be permeable. Uh, so again, made out of pavers, stepping stones, or flagstones, as we did if, with a patio escape coupon. But now we're bringing in wood and composite decking as an option as well. We're going to leave the design to you. But as long as you're reducing the amount of grass in your yard and you're making the effective changes, you can qualify for this. You will be able to qualify for this uh, program. Uh, what will not be covered is our concrete slabs. No concrete slabs. They're not permeable. Okay, so don't even ask me about it. <laughs> so, uh, so how much is this going to be? Right now, we're still determining the amount that we will rebate. But right now, we are looking at anywhere between one to two dollars per square foot. Now, if you look at the range of and the rebate that we will be looking at uh, between two hundred and five hundred that can translate between $200 to $1,000. Again, coupled with our other programs, you can see how this is very, very, can, will work with your budget as you start designing or uh, planning your project. Um, but so the question where I, I can see coming is, well, well, why do a rebate rather than a coupon? Well, the other thing that you can do with a rebate is that sourcing the product while with the coupon, we had great vendors and we still have them on our program where you can buy a flagstone, stepping stones, and we encourage you to go to them. Um, we're going to open it up where you can actually source the material wherever you find them. A lot of the many big box stores, if you will, uh, often have certain things much, much cheaper. For example, the 12 by 12 paper is often on sale. So I always got a lot of phone calls. Well, why can't they? Why can't I take my coupon to one of those places? And simply, they don't accept our coupon. They haven't agreed to accept our coupon, so they're not going to do it. But with a rebate, if you are able to budget that yourself and pay for it, you can do that. So that's probably the the, the best reason why is that we're opening it up so that it can be a budget friendly option for you. So the, again, I want to emphasize that you can combine it with other sauces incentives. I cannot say that enough. We really, really encourage our customers to do that. For those customers that have an irrigation system, of course, you will have to remove all irrigation from that area. Actually, that applies for the landscape coupon too. And I know it sounds like, well, how am I going to water it? Remember that hand watering is always allowed at any time. And now that we're in drought restrictions, um, Sorry to be bare of bad news, but you can you can hand water anytime, any year. Plus, once you establish those landscape uh, beds, um, they're going to require less water over time. Trust me, it's true. It really does happen. That, so, to, in order for those of, of you with irrigation system, how much more can you tap into our different programs? I'm going to let Seth talk to you about our irrigation consultations and rebates. All right. So, in addition to our coupons, for those of you with in-ground irrigation systems, SAWS off also offers free irrigation consultations and rebates. So, once you've called and scheduled for a consultation, one of our staff irrigation experts, such as Gail or myself, will make a visit to your property to run through and assess your irrigation system. We'll look for and identify any problems. We'll check your schedule and calculate how much water it uses every time it runs, as well as provide a custom recommended schedule based on your landscape and its watering needs. We'll also look for areas where you may be able to improve on either your irrigation or your landscape and offer custom rebate offers to either modify your irrigation system to be more water efficient, such as um, 
installing pressure reducing heads if you happen to have high pressure on your irrigation system, or even to reduce or completely remove the irrigation from areas where it's no longer needed. Um, some of you may be interested in just completely removing your irrigation system altogether, and we have great rebates ranging anywhere from $450 all the way up to $5,000 for complete irrigation removal. Um, of course, many of these irrigation rebates offers can be combined with our other coupons, uh, which provides even greater financial incentive towards creating your dream landscape. Um, just remember that if you're interested in doing any irrigation changes or removal, to call and schedule one of us to come out um, before you make any of those changes. That way we can give you the rebate offers um, and you won't be denied or anything at a later date. Okay, so our other program that is available and has gone through some changes itself as well is our rewards program. Uh, many of you on today are earning your points by attending this program and Polly will be attending our, the next two. Uh, for those of you who are not reward members, I highly encourage you to sign up because if you are attending today, you could have earned three points that would have um, uh, would have earned you a coupon, a $30 coupon uh, for just for attending and learning. So that's what this program is about, is we want to encourage our customers to go out and learn more about good gardening, good water saving gardening. And to encourage you to do that, we have the rewards program. So with three points, you automatically, if you sign up for the program, uh, you would get sent a $30 coupon that you can use now and this was not true last year, but now we've opened it up. You can buy plants, you can buy mulch, rain barrels, pretty much anything that our participate, participating vendors uh, that accept the coupon uh, have for sale. The only thing that you cannot get with this coupon are fertilizers, pesticides, insecticides, and um, rocks like river rock. Uh, Flaxone is fine, but not river rock. Uh, Look through our website as to why that we do that. Um, there's a very good reason. There'll be an assignment for you to search through our website. Um, so you keep accumulating points over time and you don't go back to zero. You just keep adding through the year. So say next week you were to add, you attend two more workshops, you add two more points, you get sent a $50 coupon. And again, you can use that to purchase the items that I mentioned for the $30. Two more points you earned a $70 coupon. So in a short period of, of, of time, you can earn all your points and effectively end up with $150 in coupons that you can use to offset the cost of a project. Say, let's go back to the landscape project. As you can see here in the picture on the left, you see the edger there? That's something that you could buy with this coupon if you wanted to, or the mulch or additional flagstone that you can create a little feature there. That is up to you uh, as what you can do with this program. And again, it, this is yet another way that you can help budget a project, be creative. We encourage you to do that. Um, and it's fairly easy. So again, for those of you that are new to the program, let's go to the next slide, or are not signed up for the program yet, I should say. It's very, very easy. We have uh, you sign up. It's a pretty simple application to fill out and submit. But more importantly, especially this time of year, there are a lot of options, a lot of workshops. And now, you know, we're, we're beginning to see a lot of our partners schedule more in-person events that may qualify for points as well. So you will have an option of in-person or online classes. Uh, it, we're trying to make it as easy as, as, easy as possible for you to uh, earn those points and you know, help you make those effective changes in your landscape. Pretty straightforward, I think. Uh, so hopefully, if you haven't signed up yet, you will. Let's go to the next one. And basically, you know, these are the programs that we feel, the three that are, are existing right now, um, and plus the one that will be forthcoming. Um, again, Seth, you know, I think you, this is the last slide, so I'll let you yeah. finish. Of course. Um, so, I mean, just finally remember that 
um, and I've gotten this question a couple times in chat already, um, but remember all of these programs are designed to be combined um, to provide the greatest incentive for converting your yard to a water saver landscape. So go wild with the combo locos. Just remember um, certain things you need to do, like schedule your irrigation consultation before you make changes. Otherwise, you may not qualify for the rebates. Um, was there anything else you wanted to add to the combo loco? Combo loco. Okay. All right. So um, remember again, the secret uh, word for the survey today is silver pony foot. Um, I will share a link here in the chat. Um, but again, this link will also be emailed to all the reward members and it'll also be on our calendar so i'll put it in the chat right now um, but otherwise we're going to go ahead and go through some of the questions and we're going to try to get as many of these answered in the next 20 minutes or so that we possibly can okay i do um, want to add one more thing for our customers yeah. especially the ones that are very interested in the upcoming outdoor living rebate if you haven't already signed up for our newsletter please do so because that will be the very first where that will be announced. That announcement will be made in our newsletter. So if you want to be among the first to find out about this when it's open and released, uh, please sign up for it if you haven't already done so. So I'm already answering some questions here, which is great. I look forward yeah. to hearing I've some more questions. I've been answering them too. Hopefully, you know, if anybody doesn't feel like we're answering them adequately or has a follow up, just keep putting them in. I'm I'm jumping as fast as I can. Sure, but That's we great. also want to answer them, you know, verbally so everyone verbally. hears right. them right. right. Okay, so there's been a couple questions about Silver Pony Foot specifically, Gail. Um, yes. So a couple of them. Um, the first one I've gotten several times is about uh, deer hardiness. Um, do you know if? So this is what I've answered too. When you look at our card that has the icons on it. The deer resistant icon is not next to silver pony foot. But, you know, I think that what we should do, because there are things that I've planted that have that deer resistant and the deer still nib at it, especially at the beginning. When it comes from the nursery and it's new in your yard, the deer are gonna go, what's that? Let me try it. And for example, they don't like bulbs, but they pulled up all my bulbs. So when it comes to silver pony foot, I say, try a little bit. It doesn't have the deer resistant icon, but I'm not sure. I think that it probably is gonna make it, um, but that's my guess. Let's try it in those deer friendly neighborhoods. Um, but I think that uh, it, it will manage. It's just, it doesn't seem like it's one of their big appealing ones. That's my answer. Excellent. And um, on that same note, it is an evergreen, right? Yes. Okay. And. As far as foot traffic goes, can it tolerate people walking on it? Yeah, so I got two questions on that. One was, how do I keep it from not taking over my pavers? And the other one was, is it going to be tolerant to foot traffic? So I think that it's gonna grow great between pavers, between flagstone. And someone asked about, you know, the area between the street and the sidewalk, which we call the parkway. So I think it can tolerate a bit of foot traffic if you were walking on it constantly and didn't have those pavers and flagstone, yeah, where you walked on it, you're gonna see a little bit more diminished, but it can tolerate light foot traffic, yes. Excellent. Um, and either Juan or Gail, um, someone asked, would they, they would like to know if these plants that are approved on our coupon list um, are animal or kid friendly, um, no toxins harmful to wildlife? Juan. Okay. Or I okay. <laughs> I, I was going to say, I don't think so, but you might know I better. Mean, I so, do know that. I'm sorry, go ahead, Gail. No, I want to hear yours and then I'll chime in. I was just going to say specifically like mountain laurel, you know, the, the oh, seeds, yeah. they can be harmful yeah. specifically to like little kids and things. So um, I think birds for the most part, you know, know not to consume them. Um, so for wildlife, it's probably not an issue, but for pets or little children that don't know any better, you know, you need to be careful with some some of the plants. Right. And for the most part, we are choosing plants that are, you know, beneficial to wildlife. Um, most of the time you can look up in our plant uh, look finder and find, you know, if there are any concerns on any of those plants. But for the most part, we are trying to choose plants that are wildlife and yard friendly. 
Excellent. Uh, we have someone here that asked, last year they planted all native plants in their front yard. They accounted for size and sunlight requirements. However, they never got the lush garden that they now see behind me here in this picture. Um, winter came, what did they do wrong? Any so tips there? It's, it's, it, it could be multifactorial and I can't answer what went wrong. I can answer that one year is not going to give you what Seth has behind him. That is an established yard that has been going for many years. And I don't know if Juan or Seth know that little rhyme that all the horticulturists and botanists say, you know, the first year you do this, second year it does this, and third year it explodes. So it takes a plant a little while. It's going to be working on its underground system first, and then it's going to be working on putting, you know, the, the, up above ground plant and it's that third year where it finally starts looking like big and lush and depending on the year we have last year the summer was relatively mild um, so heat can be a problem if it's your first year and it's a new tender plant um, other summers you can get through it but you gotta there's so many factors like water and other there's things in the ground there's grubs there's insects i literally had an american beautyberry that died within a week and it was underground grubs eating the roots there's just so many different things that you you kind of have to eliminate one at a time um, water being one of the most important factors but that's why we're picking water saver plants so that you can kind of not worry about that one i would say try it again you know i mean winter came in 2021 real hard all kinds of things died that had been living and making it through our winters that's a one-off if you will and if it happens again i'm sorry but most of our freezes are are able to you know the plants are able to get through it um i someone mentioned that they lost their rosemary i lost my rosemary too i know that it usually makes it through our our winter so i just planted a new one Excellent. And, and you Go can ahead. replace the, those plants that may indeed have died and th that happens uh, with your rewards coupons. You can use those to purchase any of those, replace them or get something else that uh, may work better for you. Uh, we have a question here that is asking if we can recommend in any drought friendly plants that thrive in deep shade. Last year, um, they tried to, but the plants are not thriving due to the shade. So any recommendations for specific plants there? Okay, yeah. my inland sea oats is my favorite grass. It is an ornamental, it's a little bit taller, so it's not something you're gonna put you know, throughout your whole yard. I'd love to see that, but I think most people aren't gonna do that. So inland sea oats, Turk's cap, and what I, what I said in the writing was, here's two things to do to figure out what's gonna thrive in the shade. One, drive around neighborhoods, your neighborhood or someone else, see what is doing well in their shady yards. Two, go to some natural area parks, you know, Hardberger Park, Salado Creek, even McAllister, you know, look at what is doing well without any additional watering in shade areas there. And then third, look at our plant profiles look for that shade tolerant icon you know mixed sun is mixed sun shade is shade look specifically for that shade icon and those are going to be your best bets wonderful um so we have someone asked a question here they said five years ago they had purchased a home with no irrigation system mm -hmm. and almost 80 percent of bermuda grass they're slowly converting the bermuda areas to planting beds um, but they mentioned that they need to install irrigation but would desire to irrigation irrigate as few zones as possible um, since they're not eliminating irrigation zones how can they take advantage of the water saver program so i mean to start with I would say you don't necessarily need to install irrigation. Um, I mean, there's a lot here, you can here. do without it. Uh, in fact, I mean, irrigation that's not well maintained or or programmed can use a lot more water than just going out and you know putting out a hose end sprinkler um, every week or every other week or whatnot. Uh, also, the water saver programs, the really the only one that you can take advantage of with an irrigation system are our irrigation rebates. Otherwise. All of the coupons, um, those are all ex 
exclusive of the irrigation. You don't necessarily need or, or have to have one. Is that right, everyone? Yes, and I, I'm just going to say a couple of things that kind of echo what what Seth has said. A lot of people, until they come and do our irrigation consults, really don't have an idea of how many gallons running your irrigation system one time will run. On average, it's probably in the neighborhood of 1,500 gallons to 2,000 gallons every single time you run it. I guarantee you that if you go out and you put a sprinkler or you put a hand water or you put you know any of those by hand methods, you're not gonna use 1,500 to 2,000 gallons. The other thing is, a lot of times when we go out to these consults, they've got things that are wrong. You know, the head's broken, it's leaking from the bottom, it's got a, you know, problems. So an irrigation system is an ongoing maintenance. Just know that if you love your irrigation system and it's great for you, wonderful. But it is an ongoing maintenance um, that you have to keep up with. So I would just like Seth encourage maybe not an irrigation system. Yes. Um, Juan, here's a question for you. Um, someone asked, how long does it usually take to get approval for an application? I assume this is- In general? The, the coupons yeah. and- Right, so uh, we have, uh, you know, we try not take more than two weeks. Uh, for example, our, our landscape coupon application went live on the 1st, and uh, which was 12 days ago. And, uh, they backed up a little bit, but I got through them and sent most of them through Tuesday, for example, this past week. So I can't promise that I'm going to get them out right away, but we certainly try not to sit on them and we try to get everything uh, processed and out the door to our customers as soon as possible. Um, if something comes up, of course, you're more than welcome to reach out to us to see what is happening. Uh, because I'll t I will tell you, I, as a person who processes a lot of applications, we will always ask for an email. And that's probably the way those coupons are gonna get to you. Well, that is the way they're gonna get to our customers. And I cannot tell you, uh, a lot of people get very creative with their emails. So always check, make sure that you type it in correctly. There's one single keystroke can just mess things up. And often a lot of in, uh, folks don't get it or think they didn't get it, but that's simply because it's a bad email, it was typed in incorrectly. So, Offhand, that's the number one thing I would recommend is be careful and make sure all your information you enter is accurate. Excellent. Um, so someone also here asked, if their backyard slants to where drainage goes out of the backyard and under the fence, do you recommend attempting to put any kind of beds next to the back fence? Um, they fear creating a blockage or having any mulch or plants being washed out. Any recommendations there? So my recommendation is you definitely do want to have plants there. You want to have plants that are going to hold the soil. So yes, plants, but also if, if you've got slope, consider having some kind of like stone terracing line that kind of slows down the water so that it, it curbs the erosion. And then you've got the plants holding and, and taking up that water uh, right there as well. So a combination. Anybody yeah. can add anything else? Um, no, and I mean, also look into um, what they call rain gardens. I mean, if it's an area with a lot of, of drainage and runoff, it may be conducive to creating kind of a rain garden that leads the water, um, you know, through a series of, of rocks and whatnot and plants that like that occasional wet foot, um, just to take advantage of that water and redirect it where you want it. Um, here's another question um, for people that are interested in trying to utilize some of our coupons. Are there any particular areas or neighborhoods in San Antonio where they could see good examples of water saber landscaping for inspiration? Hmm. I mean, the botanical garden. The, rain the botanical garden has our water saver lane uh, examples. And then. What I've seen when I go out on irrigation consults is that the Alamo Ranch Del Webb community has a lot of nice examples. Um, some of them are a little bit more over rock and succulent, but you know, just I would say drive around, take a look, because you can find them in all kinds of pockets. When you go through Monte Vista, you've definitely got some some real native 
beautiful examples going on and right next to the big green yard. And I wish I could compare water bills because I know which one is less. But yeah, um, just drive around and find them everywhere, really. I, I can't tell you, since the program's been around since 2013, well over 3 million, and we're probably now approaching 4 million square feet of change with our landscape coupon itself. But San Antonio is really big. So <laughs> seeing examples of those uh, might be tough. But I will tell you, since I've been here 15 years, this this idea of, of incorporating natives and, and well-adapted plants into the landscape, reducing the amount of grass is has caught on. And San Antonio's have done a great job of doing that. So more often than not, you're beginning to see more great examples that may or may have or may not have used our coupons. And uh, so you just have to be on the lookout for it um, in the sense that you just look for less grass. Chances are that if they have less grass in the front yard and more plant uh, landscape beds, it's probably good because most of the plants that a lot of people are using are usually good native or well adapted anyway. They're buying those already at our local nurseries. So uh, yeah. Excellent. Um, another question, Juan, for you specifically, you had, were talking about how we do not allow non-permeable like concrete slabs um, for this huh? new rebate that's going to be launched. Someone asked, uh, what about crushed granite? And another asked, uh, what about artificial turf? Okay, artificial turf will not be covered. Um, there's a lot of reasons why um, the material is, is, is probably the issue, quite frankly. Um, as far as crushed granite, just crushed granite, uh, we will not. And simply because crushed granite um, it is, can run off. Often when you're driving around, if it's raining, you will see a trail of crushed granite just washing away. So we want to minimize that. Now, I will tell you that for our land, for our flagstone feature, we are okay if you use it like as a grout feature, and, and that's, but you want to minimize that and tamper it down and as much as possible. But all of it, we would not uh, uh, coupon, have a coupon for that. Okay. Sorry. Hopefully one second. Yeah, and as we launch the coupon in April, I'm sure there'll be a lot more details on the website with specific requirements and whatnot, right Juan? I'm sorry, I'm, I'm just responding. No, 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 you're fine, sorry, you're what fine. What was that again? No, no, please, please, please. No, ask. I was just asking um, when the actual coupon launches on April, um, there Remember will be a rebate. More... It'll be a rebate, not a coupon. Rebate, sorry, rebate. Um, there'll be more requirements and conditions on the website. Oh, absolutely. The, the yeah. details, that's what we're working on, is we want to make sure that we have a, uh, a program that's going to be accessible, practical, and easy to understand. That is the challenge. And that's Excellent. what I'm working on. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Great. And someone here asked, um, do you have to re-sign up as a rewards member? Uh, they didn't re-sign in this year, but they have the rewards card from last year. Uh, the answer to that is you are automatically re-enrolled. Um, so you should already have your account set up for this year. Yes, membership is for a lifetime. Water Saver points expire every year at the end of the year, but membership is forever. All right, so we might have time for a couple more questions before we have to end this at 11 o'clock. Um, someone did ask, uh, Gail, you might know this, frog fruit, does it handle foot traffic fairly, fairly well? It does. Again, I'm going to say light foot traffic. This is why I really encourage the pavers or flagstone or it's just any kind of walking stone to be put in between because it will handle the light foot traffic. But if it's that constant foot traffic, any plant, even grass is going to kind of, you're going to see that path forming. So yes, light foot traffic, you walk over it once in a while, it'll be fine. Heavy foot traffic, throw in those pavers. Okay, and um, so one last question, they, someone asked as far as parkways, which are generally fairly narrow strips between the sidewalk and the, the road, um, are there any specific trees you would recommend that wouldn't get too big for that area and, and do well as a parkway tree? Any thoughts there? Maybe mountain laurel, something? I'm definitely thinking small. mountain laurel. Um, but, you know, the red buds also do not get very big. So when you're driving down a bigger road, and so I live near Blanco, so Blanco, Hebner, et cetera, look at the 
trees that the neighborhoods have planted next to those. And they're usually things like red buds, mountain laurels, maybe crepe myrtles. Crepe myrtles get tall, but you've got the shorter varieties as well, okay? Excellent. All right, well, sorry we didn't get to answer every single question today. Uh, if we missed you, I apologize greatly. We are just right up on time here. Uh, remember that you can always go on to our website, gardenstyleessay.com, and click on Ask the Garden Geek, and our expert resident um, garden geek will happily respond and try to answer any questions you have, or if you have specific questions for us, um, he will be happy to forward them on to us as well. Um, so thank you everyone for taking time to attend our Spring Into Gardening Spring Bloom webinar event today. And I hope you all um, jump on to the next presentation and learn some about um, the integrated pest management. Otherwise, have a wonderful day. Thank you Bye, much. Bye everyone, thank you. Bye.